So I'm here with Bill Rodolante, and we are at the edge of his private collection. And you can see that it looks already like a little bit like Jurassic Park back here. And we are going to go deep into the weeds. Well, they're not weeds, but we're gonna go deep into the weeds, so to speak, and actually see some of his plants that he's been growing. This is the original Philodendron Dark Lord. This is very popular on Instagram. Has beautiful red leaves. Uh, gets quite large, actually. Dark Lord was originally given to us by uh, an interior scaper. He got it from um, a collector, and he grew it on some interior scape jobs. Mm -hmm. And he said it did really well, so he gave it to us and said, he, here, have this mm -hmm. and grow it. And I like it. Mm -hmm. So we started growing it. Um, did real well for us. We realized how fast a grower it was, yeah. so we we started growing it, and now everybody has a little piece of it somewhere. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, how long have you had your private collection here? Um, my dad started the nursery in 83, and that's when he really started collecting. Okay. So when he started collecting back then, it was, you know, we'd buy stuff at the Aeroid Show or other through other people, other nurseries, or different one of his friends would give him something. And ever since then, we've been collecting and collecting and collecting. And then also, I've been doing my own hybridizing. So I keep the ones I like the best for more breeding purposes. Mm. And we do a lot from our own seeds through this collection. So we'll get seeds out of here and then we'll plant them and then sell them. So why don't you take us in? Cause I don't wanna, you, no, you should lead the way and you should point out this things. This is a Philodendron Pinatophytum, but this is a aberrant one. It has red stems where oh. the, the actual species has like a plain green leaf with yeah. little red dots. Yeah. But this one has complete red stems to it. So now, we, we kept that. Now this is also in the, isn't it a thematophyllum now considered? Uh, I don't think it's a thematophyllum. It's okay. different because okay. it has the cannonball shaped trunk. Oh, okay. And not, not that uh, hard woody trunk. Okay. And so that, that's, this has aberrant red stems, but not in all of them. Yeah, well, yeah. this is a new new one coming out. Okay. Eventually, this will turn all red. Oh, fascinating. Some monster deliciosas right here. This is uh, Anthurium rotolantii. This and was named after your father? Or this for was you? named by Dr. Crowett for <laughs> my father. Uh, this is one of the ones we got from a collector long time ago and um, gentleman was in North Carolina. He gave it to us and um, it's in South America and Dr. Crow had named it for us. That's so sweet. I like the corrugated look of the leaves too. Watch out for the dogs and the, uh, the leaves. We got uh, Anthurium morocrianum. It doesn't like our summer so it loses a lot of the leaves in the summer. But if you come back in the winter time, this whole plant will be covered in leaves. Wow. I mean, you don't weed whack back here, do you, Bill? No, employees <laughs> don't like coming in here and weeding. <laughs> Never know what they'll find. I mean, what are some of these large anthuriums that are flanking us to the left and the right? Uh, we got Anthurium plomenia grande, Anthurium. Uh, we have different uh, crenatum here. Uh, we have uh, Anthurium barkley. We got another Plaumonia grande. We got, uh, here's a Thematophyllum hybrid. Oh, here we go. We got Anthurium moonanae with the trilobe leaves. Oh, that's a beautiful one. I love the ones with trilobes, both philodendrons and Anthuriums. We have Anthurium round one. I tripped over an aerial root. Dr. Crow, I gave us this Diffenbachia a long time ago. Wow, that's a fast, this is a Diffenbachia? Yeah. I would have never guessed. And it is the most invasive thing in the entire world. I wish he never gave it to oh, us. Oh, are you serious? It pops up <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> this one looks like it's chlorotic, but this is actually the color of it. Uh, yes. Okay. Fascinating. It'll, it'll harden off to a darker green. Yeah. We got uh, it looks like it's... in Worsawishii. Oh yeah, that, that beautiful. Looks like a snowflake. Yeah. This fine leaf. 
Uh, we got Bilfolius Rex, which is one of my hybrids. <laughs> Did you just say Bilfolius Rex? Yes. Because <laughs> look at the flower. Doesn't that look like a T-Rex tooth? I mean, I've never seen a T-Rex before, but I would imagine that could is what could it look like? Yes. We've got uh, Anthurium uh, Calcina Mirandi. A lot of new leaves coming up here. This one's beautiful. Look at this structure. Which one is uh, this, Bill? It yeah. is, that one is, uh, I believe, Big Splash. It's hard to tell without a flower. Okay. Because two of them look the same. But this is the true hooker eye. This is actually the species hooker eye. Wow. Not many people know what really hooker eye is, because mm -hmm. hooker eye is, um, is one that's like a catch-all. Everybody calls, oh, that's hooker eye, that's hooker eye, that's huh. hooker eye. That's not actually hooker eye. Hooker eye has little white berries um, when it does fruit. And do the other it's, ones not get white berries? Or? No, it's okay. one of the more unusual ones. Okay. Most of the bird nests have uh, red um, or orange okay. or purple berries, but white is not as popular. You got so philodendrons. I love the, the, the stems is, on these. Yeah. The ruffles on the stems, the petioles. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love the new leaf too. Like, look at this new leaf. Look at the color on that. Oh, it's so beautiful. I mean, this is like walking through a jungle, Bill. <laughs> yes, it is. It's my own personal jungle. This is your own personal jungle. And we have some Chamberlainianum hybrids with Whoa, red leaves. Oh, those are nice. It's almost a shame they're hanging like so far to the ground. I mean, look, the dog's collar is getting up on the leaves. And, <laughs> and look at some Gloriosums right here. Yeah, just some nice right, big Gloriosums. Yeah, just to the left of me. Wow, these new ones. Just some more Thematophyllums. Be mindful. What's this roughly one right here? That's a uh, ballo, ballo, ballo chain or something like that. Okay. Is this a worse than whiskey eye, like just growing up out of the... This is um, podophyllum. A podophyllum? Hmm. Anthurium podophyllum. Hmm. There's some bigger ones over there. Oh, okay, I see. Right over there. We got big crystallinums. Oof. These are massive. We got big ace of spades. I remember seeing these at TPIE, the ace of spades. I don't see them in garden centers though. I've been waiting no. for one. Uh, too popular right now. Everybody's yeah. been selling everything on uh, on the internet. It doesn't yeah. even make it to the garden centers yeah. anymore. Oh, look at That's that. That's a hybrid. Nice. Go back this way. Okay. This is Anthurium clavigerum. I saw that one at the Aroid show. Somebody yeah, but was You don't see ones it. that big at the Aroid no, show. No, <laughs> no, that's true. Unfortunately, I can't bring the biggest stuff to the Aeroid show because hey, it gets how are you gonna transport too big it? to transport and, and carry. And then bringing it back? Most people don't realize that Philodendron brandianum is an elongated heart-shaped leaf, not a little leaf, because wow. they usually see it when it looks like this. Yeah. But it does actually get quite larger. I've seen it about three feet long. Wow, so you're telling us to stake it and give it some nice overhead light. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. It also gets like a little bit more splotchier. I actually like mm -hmm. it. I like the look of it as a as an older plant. You got the Anthurium white tiger. This is one of the award of the air raid show. This one's uh, it's like a nice ruffly leaf. Is it part of the Anthurium ruffles grouping? It was uh, one that what Enid gave me huh. as uh, about this big. Yeah. 
about uh, 10 years ago. Yeah. And she gave it to me and she didn't realize how big it would get in my nursery. <laughs> or she probably would have kept it for herself. She probably definitely would have kept it for herself. <laughs> you got Anthurium mancunians, which is one of my favorites. Yet it's shoved here in the corner. <laughs> I've run out of space. I see that. Eventually I'll have to get another greenhouse for all my collection. <laughs> Over here, we have Anthurium podophyllum. Yeah, that's really nice. You can see it better right here. We have a variegated Anthurium fruffles. That's nice. It has like a kind of a coppery look to it. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Yeah. Is this another podophyllum right here? That is another, uh, it's an aberrant form we oh. found. Okay, is it? It had a little bit more close, the leaf is a little bit more close sinus, so mm. we, all the, sort of looks like a little bit more close together, so we kept it. Hmm. That's the problem when you're, you're growing from seeds, you, uh, you end up with some that don't look exactly like the mother, right. and you, have, you keep them because you like the way they look. So some of the seeds of the anthurium, they have like a little bit of a, a like kind of pectin out, outside of it. Do you remove that? How do, what's the best way to actually reproduce your anthurium? Do you want me to seed? show you how? Yeah, I'd love to see okay. it. Okay. Okay. This is a rare one. This is actually the true Philodendron Williams eye, or the Modophyllum now. Yeah. Uh, most people don't know about it because they have the regular um, Stenolobum, which everybody thought was Williams eye before. Uh -huh. But then they realized that this is the actual Williams eye. So huh. not too many people have it. We have uh, Anthurium salvinii, which is very popular. Is that the Diffenbachia there that's now yep. green? Okay. Yeah. It's been growing a little more shade, so it's all green there. Yeah. Over here, we have some more of our collection. This one won a blue ribbon at the Air Ride Show. This is part of our, our breeding program. I was looking for something that laid more flat mm -hmm. than grew up, mm -hmm. so I, I uh, bred this one. Uh, we don't really have a name for it yet. Maybe you can help me come up with one. <laughs> What's um, what's uh, the what's it hybridized with or? This one was uh, my big red bird, mm -hmm. and it was crossed with um, Salvinii. Okay, but the big red bird was already crossed, mm -hmm. so it's like a cross of a cross. It's a cross of a cross of a cross of a cross. Okay, <laughs> right on. Well, we should uh, we should open it up to the audience to suggest mm -hmm. some of their best ideas for the name of this particular plant. Mm -hmm. So I think we should just open it up, and then and then we could give you a bunch of ideas. Yes. So if, to... so if you have ideas, put them in the comments below because Bill is looking for something that will beat his Billosaurus Rex <laughs> or his Big Bill. <laughs> Over here, you can actually see my original Big Red Bird. This was my original mother from my first production, and you can see in the bright light how the leaves will get red. Oh yeah, it's got a that nice coppery look. She's f survived a few hurricanes, so wow. she's a little bit more beat up. But Yeah, but she's got some new leaves kind of growing up there too. So let me show you the seeds. Okay, okay, we got some seeds over here. So when they come out, yep. they look red. Mm -hmm. This is the fruit, okay? Mm -hmm. Now eventually they'll start popping out when they're ready, really ripe. But for our purposes, they're just a little unripe right, right now. So we'll pop them out inside of the fruit. You'll see we have one to two seeds. Yep. And this one, we only had one seed. Mm -hmm. Now you take that seed and you put it on some growing media and you missed it once a day, and eventually it'll turn into this. Eventually. 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 And they're kind of sticky. Yeah. Because so they're designed to stick to whatever animal they're eating them <laughs> and get deposited onto the animal. Whoops. And then eventually fall yeah. onto the ground, right. and that's where it'll grow. Yeah. It's right there. So we are going to have uh, another anthurium kind of grow up here. So when we come back 30 years later, 
we're going to be seeing this one as big as this one. This is my Anthurium water dragon. This is a popular one. That's a great has name. Has a beautiful uh, black flower. Yeah, that is gorgeous. And I just want to point out all these air aerial roots. air roots I yeah. get that are growing right there. Remember we talked about earlier that you can attach them to trees, you can attach mm -hmm. them to rocks, pieces of wood, and they'll grow right up it, no problem. What's what's the care like for these? Are these just kind of caring for themselves at this point? At or? this point, they're caring for themselves. Okay. I water them every day. Yeah. With about five minutes of water. Okay. But uh, and I fertilize them once a year, but they produce seeds for me all year long. Unbelievable. As you can see from over there. Yeah. Now, some of our breeding program that I've been working on, and you know how popular Clarinervum is. Yes. I've been breeding with Clarinervum Whoa. to get a more disease resistant and hardy version. Is that with like an ace of spades or something or? It does have ace of spades in the yeah. background. Oh, that is super. So that's one's gonna go into tissue culture next. Yeah. Oh, you like it, Daisy, huh? Yeah, she does. She's like, I'm gonna pee right on it. Yeah. Come on, Daisy. <laughs> oh, that's gorgeous. So I'll have to think of a name for that one, too. Okay, look it, we got, we got a lot of we got, suggestions. We got some jobs for our yeah. viewers. Yeah, the viewers have to come up with names, which honestly, I would say is probably the most fun part about it. And then they'll have to come buy it because they <laughs> named it. Exactly. And then you have to tell all your friends because you actually contributed to the, the name. So we are getting group think right here to figure out the names of two plants of Bill's. This is gorgeous, Bill. I well, can't that's not, not about see them selling. seven years of breeding to get that. And now if you go into tissue culture, which could happen, what, in 2020? Will it take then probably a year or two before we actually see this probably on the market? Probably two years. Okay. So it goes to your timeline again. I know. But folks, good things come for those who wait. So maybe two years from now, you'll be able to see this plant in your garden center. Or being sold on the black market, depending on which <laughs> one's first. <laughs> Here's one of those Xanthosoma variegated Mickey Mouse that looks like a butterfly ones. Yeah. Sometimes I see them in the landscapes and like in botanic gardens. People are in, don't know how to react to them. Yeah. Because it's so weird looking. Yeah. Um, I have some customers, they're like, oh, it's so ugly. <laughs> and other ones like, oh my gosh, I have to have it. Do you have any for sale? I think some people like the more obscure kind of Strange and unusual. You can't eat stranger than that. Yeah. The leaves all warped. I and know. White variegation is what it does to it. I've seen these in the market now, right? These are mm -hmm. mac. Is this a macariza? That's macariza. Yeah, Vari variegata. Yeah. Yeah. We, we have to do that from our own cuttings mm -hmm. because uh, if you do it from TC, they never come true. And TC is tissue culture for... Yeah. It wanders back and forth and you get some that are plain green and some that aren't. At least this way, when you take the babies, you can pick out the ones that have the variegation right. and the ones that are plain green, you can throw away. Yeah. Well, I have to say, you're, this is such an inspiration. I mean, seeing one, a nice little jungle behind us of your private collection which started with your father, which is really wonderful to see that it's like kept in your family. Yeah, we're a family business. Um, and I know your son, Logan, you said, I hope he doesn't get into the plants, but who knows? He, he's so, he seems to come to life every time he's at the Aroid show. Uh, he'll probably have to support me when I'm older, so <laughs> he'll have to be a doctor or something. <laughs> well, engineer, maybe. Well, time will tell, time will tell. But thank you so much. I mean, between this and, you know, all of your hybrids, I mean, I think it's just like super inspirational and I know people will love to see it. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. No problem. I'm, I'm glad you came down to visit me. You promised at the TPIE show and you I came know. through. I came through. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'm glad, um, I'm glad we could actually show a little bit of your passion. 
Well guys, that was Bill's big reveal of his private plant collection. What did you think of it? We have our work cut out for us though, because he has two hybrid plants that need names. So be sure to submit your ideas for Bill in the comments below. And if you like this video and you're digging the channel, then give it a thumbs up and tap on that subscribe button. And keep on top of your plants care. Sign up for my houseplant care spreadsheets. If you purchase the 125 houseplant care spreadsheet or enroll in the houseplant masterclass, then you'll get tutorials on our free houseplant care tracker, which sends you automatic reminders for watering and fertilizing. Additionally, you'll be able to record, track, and share important milestones in your plant's life, like when you swap it or if it gets a new leaf. Details on homesteadbrooklyn.com and in the description below.